Hello everyone, Joe Conkley in the shop. Today, we're looking at this fine of the 70 D28 that we previously looked at. As you can see, there's no back on the guitar. It's right over here. Set back. Came off pretty clean, all told. Really, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, came off, you remember I removed the binding and then removed back in a similar method to what I'm doing now, which is with heat and moisture. So I get the heat lamp up here and heat up the uh, element that I'm trying to separate. And then I use these knives in a series of moves along with this brush to add moisture the whole thing. And I see my temp for my temperature gauge that my water is getting a little cool. Um, I've already started this process just to see how it was going. So I didn't have to jump in on the video totally blind. And it's going pretty well. Um, I have a portion of this uh, brace already um, loosened up and I'll show you what I mean by that. Here. So I have this spatula and uh, I've already inserted it into the glue line all the way to about right there, you know. And so when I say inserted it into the glue line, um, that is what I'm truly trying to do and I believe I've accomplished it for the most part. But because I'm working with a piece of spruce glued to a piece of spruce, it's a little harder to do that uh, than it is like uh, with a bridge, a piece of ebony or rosewood glued to a piece of spruce. Because the two items are of different hardness, the harder the material is, the easier it is for me to get to that glue line and not cut into the wood because I got soft wood to soft wood here. And this spatula is, you know, fairly sharp. It's not super sharp, but it's fairly sharp. And I try to keep it sharp. I haven't sharpened it in a while though. I try to, you know, I could, I could take the spatula and cut right through a piece of spruce with, with that sharpened edge if I, if I wasn't careful. So I'm quite positive that this is not completely 100% glue line removal just because of the nature of things. But if I need it, because I'm not gonna reuse these braces, I could literally destroy them as long as I didn't do anything to the top. So another way to, take this off if I, if I was having major difficulty, I would get a, a small plane and literally turn the brace into shavings and just shave it down to nothing and that would come off, you know. Um, but that's a, that's a lot of work too and uh, I'd rather not do it that way. Um, so I'm doing it this way. So here we go. Take the brush, introduce some warm water to either edge of the uh, glue line there. Take a warm knife and start working my way across. And uh, slow process. My hope here in the video is that I would be most of the way through this and be able to finish it off for you and show you the complete removal of this brace. Um, you may have to use some time lapse for that because <laughs> it's not terribly exciting in the actual removal um, because it's a slow process. So. But I'm going to keep going. Okay, here we are. Should be the moment of truth here. The very end of the brace is attached in a small way here. Huh. Yeah. See there? Although I am all the way along this side, I would expect the whole thing, yeah, 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 yeah. See, and see the whole thing's moving there, but there is a few spots here where I'm not all the way through now. I'm 
something. This, this whole thing is starting to get a bit. Yeah, better get this little guy out of the way. Bingo. Right. There it is. It's off of there. If you can get in the body here and see, um, we can see that I didn't get to the glue line on this part right here. See that part of the brace there? But all the way through here I did, you know? And so, um, I was, on this edge I was working in this direction, you know? So I would say that whatever run out there is on this brace is sort of happening in this direction where there's a slight amount of run out. And, you know, so the grain on the side of this has a slight, very slight angle to it. So as I worked in this direction, I ended up going up into that grain rather than, you know, started on the glue line and then went up into the grain. So it really worked on the glue line when I started to come this direction. But this edge couldn't really get the knife in up there so anyhow there's that brace and you have this little bit of uh, spruce left here so I can now kind of see a little more of what I'm doing and probably for sure I like I said I can sand plane and chisel this little chunk off because it's not terribly important to the whole thing except that it be as gone as I can get it, but I'm doing that right now. Actually, I think it would be easier to take a chisel and again, work on the, I'm trying to work the glue line and not get into the top here, but just to sort of chisel this last little bit off, I think. Got a good start on it there. I wonder if I can. There we go. Okay, so that is off of there. And like I said, I'd like to try this up a little bit before I proceed. Don't put that moisture seep all the way through the thickness of the top and possibly sort of settle between the top and the finish. And because uh, I could get some cloudy areas. And I'm just going to use the heat lamp here to dry it up a little bit. So you can see some other areas of damage here, like right here as the person who was doing this scalloping started to, or you know, brace removal started to get into this stuff, he slipped and gouged the top right there. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that, if anything. Definitely taking note of it. One of the things I'll do is to measure the thickness of the top in all areas and to see just how generally thick the top is compared to other uh, guitars. You know, I would say that I would like to see the top at the thinnest at 110 thousandths in this situation. Um, it could be as thick as 135 and still work, you know, but, um, and the other, so there's that. That's really the only area of damage to the top I see on the interior. The other thing is this bridge plate. It's a uh, standard 70s large rosewood plate and the holes in the top have been, uh, original holes have been plugged and moved forward. Part of that was for this different bridge that was put on. You can see there's this hole in the back edge and a corresponding hole right here. That was to attach what is called, uh, used to be called a bridge doctor, um, which is a dial of wood that um, but, you know butts up against the neck blocks and then has another dowel 
with a screw attachment right through the top, sort of a right angle thing right here. And that takes some of the tension of the strings, which want to um, do this type of a thing, and especially because there's a big hole cut in here, and that weakens the area, you know, if it wants to cave in at the sound hole and bulge up behind the string. So it's meant to counteract that tension because that's where, that was the whole problem with this guitar is the bracing and the top were not holding up. I don't know if that was, my impression is, is that the guitar didn't sound that great to begin with. Someone thought of the idea of scalloping braces. They did that work, it turned out not, you know, turned out pretty horribly and um, that weakened the top then the bridge dock was put in, but in any case, I'm gonna remove this bridge plate too. And uh, my plan is to put a smaller, at least the footprint, uh, maple bridge plate. So uh, basically to convert this to a 30 style bracing pattern, which is certainly scalloped with a small maple bridge plate. Then I have to consider where I'm gonna place the X um, a, a true 30 style bracing would be what's called an advanced X, where the X would be closer to the sound hole. See, and that, you can see that that uh, water stain is starting to dissipate quite a bit there. So, um, in this area right here, so I'm gonna try. But uh, that's what I'd like to do is be able to move that X. And one question that came to me, okay, so you're removing the top or the back to get to the braces, what are you gonna do about, <clears throat> there are several spots, you can't see them under here, but you can't see them here, where the um, X brace is notched into the lining there. So what I'm gonna have to do is take this piece of lining, like these three little spots there, and remove it completely, that will allow me to take the brace, and then I'll put new ones in, you know, on, right on top of the next brace. But if I do an advanced X, I have to consider the angle of that X, where it's going to be, and where these ends are going to come in. Because <clears throat> usually with that <clears throat> advanced X um, scallop brace guitar, where these braces end, like right here, um, that stays the same. These two ends are established that. Then the next thing that establishes how wide this angle is, is um, where that um, where that X sits right here. I have to consider what I'm gonna do with the transverse brace, the popsicle brace, and these three reinforcements around the sound hole. Um, there's a good possibility I'm gonna remove those. There's also a possibility that I'll leave those. And I have this interior spreader here because as I took the, so I have an outside mold. When I finally removed the back, I found that the whole thing wanted to do this a little bit sort of move in, you know, the sides went like this a little bit without the back holding to that shape. So I had to put the interior spreader in to get everything back in order. And uh, I need access to what's right underneath here. So I'll have to remove this spreader. I do have a spreader that fits here on the lower bath. I'm gonna try and put that in while I, when I remove this one. And uh, even if it moves a little bit, as long as I can take the spreader off, take out what I need to, put it back in, as I need to through this process. I mentioned before that I have a work board underneath here. You can see the mahogany through the sound hole. This work board has a flat edge and a flat upper bow. It transitions to like a 30 foot radius here in the lower bow, bow in this area. And so when I make the braces, new braces to put in here, they are also going to be final sanded on this work board, you know, to take that shape. And then when I glue them on, the brace will have that shape, the work bar will have that shape, and I will glue the brace down there, and hopefully that the top will retain that shape. And then uh, with string tension, it'll also get an extra helper there in retaining that shape or creating a slightly new, different shape, which is uh, my version of what a 30 style top should be, what the dome should be. And that's where I'm going. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Questions, I got answers. Uh, and uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. Thanks everybody, in the shop.